Welcome back to Tips with Trev, the show where I give developing baseball players some easy tips to end their slumps faster and become a superstar sooner. Let's talk about post-game recovery. Ice, heat, as one famous baseball movie said, hot ice. What do you do? Let's talk about it. <laughs> The first thing you have to start with when you're thinking about ice or heat is what problem you're trying to solve, right? Did you just pitch and you don't really, you're, you're tired, but you're not really sore or painful or anything like that, but you've just heard that icing is a good idea and you want to protect your arm? Did you pitch and now you're swollen? You can visibly see that, you know, your elbow is swollen or your shoulder is swollen and there's acute pain, like sharp pain somewhere. Well, you handle those things very differently, all right? The next thing is you got to understand that ice is a stressor. Ice is going to put stress on the body. But heat is also a stressor. It's going to put stress on the body. And pitching is a stressor. And hitting is a stressor. So all of these things are going to have their benefits and their detriments, all right? So that's why it's so important to identify at first what problem you're trying to solve. If you have acute pain, and by acute pain I mean in a specific location, like I can touch it and it hurts right here, or like I got hit and it hurts right here and it's visibly swollen. If you have acute pain or visible swelling, ice is probably the way to go, all right? At least in the beginning. Ice is a stressor. It's going to slow down the blood vessel, the, the, the blood flow, all right? And this, it does this by constricting the blood vessels. If you think about ice, uh, and I think of things through a physics landscape, the cooler things are, the less movement there are in the particles, it just shrinks everything down until they're absolutely frozen rock solid. Think about water, it's very fluid. Until you freeze it, it's very hard. There's no movement there. Heat, on the other hand, if you take ice and you heat it up, and then there's more movement, and uh, you know, it's gonna increase blood flow and you know, dilate the blood vessels, and everything's gonna you know, flow through there more. So if there's swelling, generally speaking, you want to ice that to reduce the swelling. Now, there's some advanced things here uh, where maybe you don't want to ice it, you want to cup it, you want to scrape it, you want to do some movement. I'm just talking about the basics right now uh, on how to, how to figure out if you want to ice after a game or not. All right, I'll get into that stuff in a later video, I'm sure. But if there's swelling or if you have pain, actual pain, not just soreness like, oh, I pitched and like, oh, my arm's kind of sore, but I can't really point to exactly where it is. It's just kind of sore. If you have pain like here, like in a specific spot or you're visibly swollen, ice is probably the way to go. If you don't have either of those things, probably not a good, a good idea to ice. And the reason for that is, like I said, ice shrinks everything down. It contracts everything and it reduces blood flow. The, na the body's natural way of recovering from a, a stress, from lifting, from activity, from throwing, whatever the case is, is inflammation. Inflammation is strictly just blood flow that's going to that location and there's some damage in the area, whether it's mus muscular damage or tendon or anything like that. And the blood carries nutrients and white blood cells and all sorts of good stuff to, the, to that area. And the body then repairs what happened in that area if it's repairable, all right? So, if you don't have visible swelling, you don't have acute pain, and then you ice everything, the, the micro damage, the micro tears in the fibers, the micro tears in the muscles, the fatigue and all that, it's gonna get less of the blood flow, less nutrients, less white blood cells, less of all the good stuff, the recovery, and it's gonna take out all the bad stuff less quickly too. So you're actually just stressing, you're stressing the cells with the, with the cold, with freezing them basically, that's stressful to the cells, and then you're limiting the amount of you know, recovery that the body can, can do. All right, so stacking a stressor on top of a stressor for no specific reason doesn't make any sense at all. The vast majority of people that I see in the big leagues nowadays don't ice after a game, right? Because there's not an acute pain or a swelling. And they understand that doing some more active recovery and, or passive recovery with heat or movement or Mark Pro or Normatec or some of these different things is actually better and aids in the recovery and speeds things up. All right, so let's talk about some of those things. I have a couple notes here. Uh, for those of you who are asking what you should do post-start, 
you should have a good understanding by now of whether you need to ice, and if not ice, then what do you actually do? Well, you can heat it up. Uh, generally speaking, you're not just gonna put a hot pack on that, that's for warm up, but heating it up means moving it, activating, doing light activity to increase the blood flow, All right? And this could be, um, it could be a series of isometrics and activity. I've long used a, uh, a program called Accelerated Arm Recovery. Uh, it's developed by Lee Fiocchi at Dynamic Sports Training, so shout out to Lee for this. Um, it's a series of movements with a shoulder tube where I'm doing it very lightly, I'm just activating the muscle, and then I'm doing an isometric contraction, very light, in that same, uh, in that same type of position. And so this is bringing blood flow into the area and then making sure all the muscles are turned on and activated. And then it flushes the blood flow out when you do the isometric, it helps kind of you know, flush everything out and you bring more nutrients in. And so it's this kind of gradual like increased blood flow and then activate and, and that's kind of what it's based around. So you can do an active recovery like that. Uh, you can do something that's a passive recovery like I've talked about the Mark Pro and I've covered this in a previous video. So if you haven't checked that out, check it out. But this is a passive thing where you're just kind of like, it's a passive contraction. You wear an electric stimulation and it helps with the lymphatic system. So this helps bring blood flow to the area, flush out the bad stuff. These are some things that you can do. You can do isometric, like heavy isometric contractions where you get max activation of, of, the, uh, of the part that you're, you know, the part of the body that you're trying to, um, trying to affect. This can be forearm, it can be external rotation of the shoulder. Generally in pitching, those are the two things that you go and you attack after a start. You see people doing manual forearm exercises or you know, wrist curls or whatever. You see them doing kind of like external rotation drills where they're on their side. And then, so this is kind of activating those muscles, making sure everything's turned on and, and functioning correctly. Um, the last thing to say here is if you have acute pain and you have swelling, you probably have a problem that's bigger than ice is gonna fix. And you should probably go get that checked out. So if you're a kid, if you're a high school kid, a college kid, and you notice that something's swollen or it's acutely painful, like get checked out. See your PT, see your medical advisor, see your doctor, you know, your trainer, whatever it is, go get looked at because you probably have a bigger problem than just the ice or the heat. So that's, uh, that's what I got for you. I think that it's really important as, a, as an understanding of how you're gonna structure your post-game routine to know exactly what you're trying to accomplish, what stress did you incur, and what are you trying to accomplish by doing the recovery? Uh, do you need the ice, acute pain, or swelling? If not, do some active recovery, get a Normatec, get a Mark Pro, um, get a game ready even, get a, do, do accelerated arm recovery by you know, the, the Leafy Oji program that I mentioned. There's a lot of different things you can do. I would not recommend icing though, as a general principle. So hopefully that clears some of that up for you guys, for you coaches, for you players out there, parents who might be wondering how you can protect your kid's arm. Hopefully that gave you some information that you can use. If it did, if you found it helpful, share it with anybody else who might find it helpful. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Leave me a like, leave me a comment. Let me know any future topics that you'd like me to cover. I got a goal of getting to 100,000 subs by the end of 2020. I appreciate all of my subscribers already. Appreciate all the new ones that are gonna hit that subscribe button as well. I'll see you in the next video.